Okay. Uh, good morning. Happy Saturday. So this game is full screen only, so I'm struggling a little bit, but we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna try. Um I'm gonna pull it up on the phone here. Um but uh yeah, it is a free point and click game called Dots Home. Twitch is frozen, great. Um that I probably got during the free VN Fest. <laughs> it's the letters, but slightly disappointed. Yeah, you you know how I feel about games that force full screen. Um, so that's but I mean it's free, so uh okay. Alright. Muted the phone, but I'm gonna try and launch it. We'll see if it comes up and I'll have chat on here. So hopefully it's gonna pick it up. There it goes! Yay! Superbase says, also, I just remembered that Skyrim does have a forced first-person section at the start, but it's really short. And you have control for not very long of it. <laughs> That's the part where you're, like, tied up and then gonna be executed and the dragon comes, right? The animation's cute. So I'm thinking I might be some kind of time traveler? Like a time traveling key? Ooh, we got some, uh, some racism happening. Zubri says, correct, the whole sequence is about 10 minutes and you have control for maybe two minutes before you are freed and can swap to the third person. Oh, it's just looping now. Okay. We shall skip. Yeah, so as you can see in the settings, there is no option for not full screen, so we'll just start a new game. I need to get home. Looks like I have an inventory. Looks like the theater is still closed. Oh. oh, okay. So if it's something I can click on, it turns into the little pointy, pointy sign. Today's newspaper, June 2nd, 2021, the 313 Scoop. What's in store for the city's environmental future? Detroit is changing, whether we like it or not. Okay, so we're getting some exposition here. It's 2021 Detroit. My neighbor used to be dead quiet with almost nothing to go on. I swear there was no one here, but once businesses started coming back and folks started fixing up homes, my block came back to life again. Yes, while, yet, while it's true, Anderson's neighborhood has seen a boost in new business from upscale coffee shops to even the city's first tiki bar, this change hasn't been universal across the Motor City, particularly when it comes to enacting environmental justice for all. Daphne DeRocha, who lives in northwest of Anderson's neighborhood, had this to say, I live in one of the most polluted areas of the city, right next door to one of the most gentrified. While others worry about where they'll get their morning coffee, I'm worried about if the air levels are too hazardous for me to go outside on my porch any given day. One thing all city residents need to realize, DeRoche argues, is that the city's industrialized backbone lacking infrastructure hurts us all, but who most directly impacts depends on proximity, race, and place. There isn't one person in my family without asthma. If I had known the fate, th 
If I had known that fate was predetermined for us, I would have never lived here. Yikes. Is this my house? A yellow key, perhaps? Oh, are you kidding me? I swear I left this door unlocked. Jeez, Grandma, can't keep a door open for nothing around here. Now I gotta find the right key. Uh, I'm assuming yellow key goes to yellow door? No? Apparently it's the red key. Grandma, why'd you lock the door? I was only gone for a minute. It's not even dark yet. She locked it because you needed to go through the tutorial. Dorothy, now you know an unlocked door is an un open invitation to trouble. I've lived here long enough to know the neighborhood's changing. Whatever you say, Grandma. Hmm, I wonder what those papers are for. Speaking of changes, I keep seeing those cash for keys flyers everywhere on this block. You're telling me some of them even have the nerve to call me. For every one I block, three more replace them. Do you ever think about selling the house? Sometimes, but where else would I go? Somewhere whose streets I don't know? I've started over too many times in my life, and I'm too old to do it again. I thought old was a cuss word. <laughs> Only if it comes from you. <laughs> right. Hmph. <laughs> Y'all millenniums. Millennials, Grandma. Millenni whatevers have no idea what we went through back in the day. Before we came up here from South Carolina, your grandfather and I were sharecroppers. We busted our backs on a farm every day while the white folks who owned the land charged us more for rent than they paid us for our crops. We may not have been slaves, but if you ask me, it wasn't too much different. That's why when Carl got a letter from his cousin Eustace up here about some good paying work at the auto factory, we packed our bags, paid our debts, got a one-way bus ticket to Detroit, and never looked back. I swear you tell me the story about once a week. That's because I need to remind you where you come from. I wouldn't have it any other way, Grandma. Wait, is Carlos here right now? Mm-hmm. Georgia dropped him off when you were out at the corner store. How about you go get him and bring him upstairs? Dinner's about ready. Fine, but when he gets mad at me for interrupting his Supreme Bash Brothers battle, <laughs> I'm blaming you. You talk like I know what any of those words mean. It's one of Carlos's favorite games, Supreme Bash Brothers. Featuring famous characters such as Kerbo and Iron Knight. I like it. Yo, Squirt. Five more minutes! Nope, Grandma wants you upstairs now. Plus, you know how this place upsets your asthma. If you were a cool aunt, you would let me stay down here a few more minutes. Too bad for you, I'm your only aunt, which automatically makes me the cool aunt. You're no fun, Auntie Dorothy. Nope. No, none of that. To you and everyone else, it's Dot. D-O-T, period. Well, Grandma calls you by your full name. Yeah, because when have I ever been able to stop Grandma for doing anything? Now come on. Please, Dot, just a few more minutes. Fine, but the countdown starts now. It, it tends to be a better way to uh, negotiate, to give them the choice. Grandma keeps important documents in there. I'm not allowed in. Explore the house a little more. Dinner's not ready yet, but I am starving. It's Grandma's world-famous mac and cheese. Smells great. I just got a new item. Looks like it's a power bar of some kind. See, it pays to explore. The photo's on the fridge. Aww. Great, now I'm craving wall pretzels. I think Carlos added this one when he was little. Well, littler. Georgia and Alma always point out, point it out whenever they stop by. Can't believe it's been three years since Mom and Dad moved to the Sunshine State. 
Guess I should have taken Mom at her word when she said this was their last winter here. A postcard from Florida. I swear Mom and Dad send one every year. I should plan a trip to visit them at some point. We're getting exposition. Oh yeah, we get it. You traded pine trees for palm trees, Mom and Dad. <laughs> My undergrad graduation. I definitely heard grandma's cheer the loudest in that stadium. I know the whole education department was shook. Go Warriors! Sounds like maybe she's a teacher? Or at least graduated with a degree in education? Grandma loves these types of inspirational quotes. I think they're kind of cheesy, but for some reason, I don't mind this one as much. Be the person you needed when you were younger. That's nice. Okay, it's been five minutes. Okay, time's up. But it hasn't been five minutes yet. Tough beans, bud. Let's go. It actually has been. Let's go have some macaroni and cheese. What up? Smells like Grandma's world-famous mac and cheese in here. Don't touch. It's cooling down right now. Cooling down? You mean we gotta wait before we can even eat? I could've finished my game. Why you wanna hang out in the only place where mole girls on the walls is beyond me? Because the video game is down there. Duh. <laughs> Move the video game to a different room. The rest of the house is for you and Grandma. The basement is a place that's just for me. Lord, I guess they aren't kidding when they say history repeats itself. You sound like Hank back when he moved out in 86. Pretty sure a flair for dramatics is a family trait. Knock, knock, knock. Someone's at the door. You expecting anyone, Grandma? Heck no, not without a call first. Maybe it's that person Dot's been secretly texting all month. Shut it, you. Whoever it is, I know they better stop banging on my darn door. Don't worry, I'll get it. Yeah, the kid has a legit point. Everybody has needs a place to be them. For sure. Oh, I actually don't want to go upstairs. I want to go to the door. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who are you? Who said you could just walk in? See, Dot? That's why we lock the door. <laughs> ah, hello, miss. Sorry about the sudden intrusion, but as I always say, an open door is an open invitation for new opportunities. That's a terrible saying. Maybe, but more importantly, are you Mavis Hawkins, the owner of this lovely home? Uh, no, that would be my grandmother, but you can talk to me. I see. Well, my name is Michael H. Murphy III, and I represent a company called Hope Equity. We're investing heavily in bringing back this neighborhood, and we are willing to give you straight cash for the keys to this... Uh, uh, let me save you some time. I've seen the flyers. We're not interested. But, but this is a golden opportunity. We're paying above fair market value for distressed homes and revitalizing. Do we look distressed to you? How can you bring back a neighborhood that never went anywhere? Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to offend Miss Hawkins. If you explain, I'm sure your grandmother will come to understand. You meant what you said, and so did I. We're not interested. Bye. Slam the door in Murphy's face is an achievement that I just got. Wow, the ceiling's leaking again. This home do be upward. I mean, it has a leak in the roof, has a mold down there, yeah. A little, little distressed. A little bit. Hmm. See, this, I would say, is poor game design, because it looks like there isn't anything to do in this room. But maybe that'll change later. So I'm gonna go back and tell them that that dude stopped by, I guess. Can you believe that dude walking up on us like that? He's lucky I didn't. You think it's true what he said? That they're paying more than it's worth and in cash? Don't tell me you're actually considering this. 
I'm just thinking, we could really use that money. I'm not getting any younger, and these bills only seem to grow every year. Fixing that water leak from last year almost put me out of my own savings. I thought you said you couldn't bear to start over again. Between Hank down in Florida and your sister Georgia? I'm sure I could find a place close to home. I thought this was home. Ugh, I'm going upstairs. You okay? I bet Grandma's mac and cheese will cheer you up. This conversation made me lose my appetite. Y'all go ahead without me. I know you don't like it, but I could use the money. I thought you were going upstairs. Alright. Mind if you call your shot with this game. Go ahead. Um, I think what's gonna happen is she's gonna go back in time and make different choices and the house isn't gonna be distressed. Grandma doesn't think she has much left and wants to get her family a fresh start. Property taxes, repair fees, electric bills. I get that we need the money to pay the bills, but do we really have to give up the house to get it? But if we stay, does this mean we just have to keep struggling forever? Geez, I'm giving myself a headache. Maybe if I take a nap, I'll wake up with a clearer head. It's the Wizard of Oz. She's gonna have a dream. Especially since her name's Dorothy. She's putting herself aside grandma is because she sees her feelings are affecting her family i want a place that's just for me new opportunities because when i when have i ever ever been able to stop grandma from doing anything that was some nap at least my headache is gone my door is locked from the outside Maybe one of my keys will open it. Wait a minute, why is this key glowing? Also, where did this key come from? <laughs> this was not in my inventory before. Does it want me to use it on this door? Well, here goes nothing. Uh... Visit the magic hallway for the first time. What the? Just how long was I asleep for? And who redecorated this place? Minimalism is so not grandma's style. Oh, I must have missed you coming in. You again? I don't believe we've met. You're here for the open house, yes? How do you like the upstairs so far? This is, this is the first. This is, because remember the guy we met before was the third? He's the first one. Open house, what are you even talking about? A three bedroom, two bath wonder. Great amount of space for a family, if you and your husband are looking to start. Is he here with you? I'd be happy to chat with him man to man about the details. You must be confused. This house isn't open. It certainly is, miss. Why don't you continue to look around? Better be quick with your decision, though. You're not the only one looking. I need to find Grandma and find out what the heck is going on. This door is closed. Right. Do you think we're making the right decision, Carl? What if things here are just as bad as they were at the farm? Even if things get bad up here, I don't think they can get much worse than what we left behind in Effingham. Wait, why are those voices so familiar? He's a grandma and grandpa. Wait a minute, grandma, grandpa? Huh? Grandma? I ain't nobody's grandma. Okay, I've seen this happen in the movies. Just gotta play it cool. <laughs> don't tell me you have your eye on this place, too. No, no, this home is yours. Uh, I live in the neighborhood and just started, decided to pop in. Oh, a neighbor. Well, it's nice to meet you, miss. Dot, short for Dorothy. My grandmother named me. What a beautiful name. Your grandmother has good taste. Name's Carl, Carl Hawkins, and this here is my wife, Mavis Hawkins. Since you're from the neighborhood, can you tell us what it's like here, Dorothy? Well, uh, things are a bit different now, but we always look out for each other here. 
I know everyone's name on the block and can count them. Count on them to have my back when I need it. Well, I'll take that as just the answer I needed. Me too. Sounds like the perfect place for us to settle down. Hopefully this Murphy fellow will stick to his word. This is the first house we've looked at all week that hasn't turned us away just for being colored. I assure you that I am happy to work with you, your people, Mr. Hawkins. Why, I was just telling the young lady over there that it's a perfect home to start a family. I thought you said you were just passing through. I swear, I'm not interested in this place. What a shame. Mrs. Hawkins, why don't you think about all the delicious meals you could cook in this fabulous kitchen? While your husband and I talk business in the living room. But any business of my husband's is mine, too. Go, Grandma. <laughs> She's right. We'll hear what you have to say together. If you insist. I should go. Did you say you're employed at the auto factory? No, sir, not yet. I'll be going down there tomorrow to see about the job. Hmm, there's always a catch when dealing with you people. Lucky for you, this is a Negro neighborhood on the rise. I can make it easy for you to buy your dream home with a contract for a deed where you just make monthly payments. I'd make a decision quick if I were you. I'm gonna lose my mind if I hear another word. I need some air. <laughs> I'm gonna take a walk and see how to get out of here. Oh, she went upstairs. It's weird seeing the house for sale like this. Hmm. So it is June 2nd, 1959. The Detroit Daily Post, your neighborhood could be next. Every house marked by an X now occupied by Negroes. I'm broad-minded, said one homeowner when a Negroes moved onto his block, but a short time later he panicked and sold his home at a loss. In today's post, you'll read how speculators... You'll read how speculators for racial change. I don't understand that sentence. Anyway, racism, racism, racism. It's, it's, it's 59. <laughs> if he were less professional, he'd be trying to bully them into one specific option. It says super base. Oh, while he is racist, I appreciate he is still being professional in the business part. Yeah. Wow, this is one heck of a dream. Who knew I could dream something so detailed? Greenlight Theater, now showing imitation of life. Don't you believe in chasing rainbows? And historically accurate. Miss, miss. Oh, it's you. You had me chasing you for nearly two blocks. If I was you, I wouldn't go any further. The neighborhood beyond this point is not for your kind. How about you come back with me to the open house? Wouldn't want you to get into trouble now, okay? I can find my own way back. Please, I insist. No, I insist. Interesting, I can't go any further. It won't allow me to. Do you know what happened in 1963? Um, well, civil right movement was happening in the 60s. Uh, was 1963 Rosa Parks? Okay, this seems to be the edge of the world. So we're just gonna go back inside the house. Four years removed from MLK. But this is the 50s, so even earlier. It's locked. Do I progress the game? Like that. Maybe I want to trust him, but this just sounds like the raw deal we had with old man Macon and his farm back home. I know money's tight, but I could do my sewing on the side to help out. We could really make this home ours, even if we just have to make things work. Yo. Anyone ever tell you that you are one weird gal? I'm starting to think so myself. Any luck with the decision? 
We want the house, but that Murphy fella is just making us choose between a contract for deed or renting the place. Well, what's the difference? The way he tells it, we'd just be responsible for making regular payments on the house until the balance is paid off. And once that balance is paid off, the house is ours, free and clear. Only thing is, if we miss a payment, then we're back to square one, and we could lose the house. Never mind the fact that it could take us between 5 and 50 years to pay the house off in the first place. I just wish we could get a loan, as if the bank would even let us in the door. Maybe we should find a place to rent nearby until money isn't so tight. I'm tired of renting, Carl. We need to put down roots. This is the only place that'll even take our money, and y'all heard what the man said. If we don't take it now, we'll lose our chance. Step out? Okay, have a good one. Uh, plus, there are other families like uh, us on the block. We won't be alone here. Dorothy, what do you think we should do? Better make it quick. Time's a ticking. I'm certain you two could make a great home here. I'm gonna say rent, since it sounds like they bought. And that'll change the future. But your house makes a good point. You should rent until you can really afford to buy the home on your own terms. I think you're right. Like I said before, I don't know why, but I trust you. Well, I don't, but I trust my maybe, so I'll go with what you say. Wonderful. Mr. Hawkins, if you follow me, I have some paperwork for you to sign. I hope it works out for you both, Gran, Miss Mavis. I know we're about to be neighbors, but I swear you already seem like family. Would you look at that? I seem to have misplaced my pocketbook. Let me go look around and see if I can find it. Carl is right. You are one weird gal. Maybe I can use this weird key again. Here's hoping I'm not out of place this time. I think we're gonna now go forward. This has to be a dream. I should sleep again. It's no use. Can't fall asleep. Things still feel weird. Maybe if I just go about my day, things will go back to normal. It's locked again. I guess I'll use that glowing key. Here goes nothing. Wait, they're making us go through twice? That's awkward. Well, this place is different. It could use some fresh paint and maybe a... Wait, is that a mouse? Looks like somebody's getting evicted. Why can't I ever find my wallet? I don't know how you find anything with your head so firmly planted up your behind. Why do you want to see a movie about a serial killer in a project anyway? We live in a project. Yes, we do, and we can leave it too. Someone tell me why I married the most stubborn woman in Michigan. Someone's got to be realistic around here while you walk around with your head in the clouds. I know these voices. They sound like... Thank goodness. Are you the babysitter? Mom? I mean, ma'am, sorry, I think you have me as a stakeus for somebody else. Look, you want to make ten bucks? We're out of options here. Long story short, I'm Evelyn, this is my husband Hank, we are running very late for our movie. Relax, we are not that late. We did not just fight for an hour for you to tell me to relax. It's not for no reason, me and Amos have a really good idea this time. You know what I think is a good idea? Taking the voucher they are offering us and renting a house that's close to the movie theater. I'm tired of driving out to Farmington Hills every time we want to see a movie. Ev, what's a good house without a community? That's not a home. Jeez, I gotta take a walk. That man is driving me crazy. Please come inside. Okay. Uh, are you alright? We've been fighting about this since we got the notice that they're turning these apartments into townhomes. 
They're supposed to be for the people who live here, but we all know how that goes. He wants to stay. I want to move on to something better. Simple as that. I always thought living in public housing would be temporary, and then came our daughter Georgia, and well, you know, life. Whoa, Georgia's been born already? That must mean I'm in the early 90s, before I was born. Weird. This is no place to raise a family. The building is literally falling apart in front of our eyes, and good luck trying to get a management to fix anything once it breaks. Now that they're demolishing this project, we have an opportunity to take a voucher and move on up. I'm with you. What's there to love about this place? I mean, sure, we know all our neighbors, and we all look out for each other, but we could find that somewhere else. Hank doesn't see it that way. His best friend Amos lives down the hall. Those two are always dreaming up new business schemes, and this time Hank swears it's legit. I want to be supportive, but I don't want to be stuck here. If we move out, we'll be giving our daughter Georgia better opportunities. Wow, I wouldn't expect you to be this stressed out. You seem like a super calm under pressure type of person, at least from my experience. You're psychic or something? If I freak out, Hank freaks out. You see why I want to go to some silly horror movie so bad? I guess you need the escape. Exactly. Hey, do you mind grabbing Hank from Amos's place? I need to calm down and maybe find this man's wallet for him. Okay, we're gonna do that now. Man, this demolition stuff's bugging me out. What's the government calling it? Hope for? I don't feel a lot of hope about them knocking down our homes. I feel that, but keep your eyes on the prize. We finally got a winning game plan. Yeah, that's dad. Knock, knock. I mean, if you're really sure we could get jobs working construction here while they build those fancy townhouses. Yeah, dude, it's the law and everything. I was looking at those flyers that say that the crews working here got to hire people from the building. It's called Section 3. Can they not hear me? Maybe you better knock again. Knock, knock. I don't care how many sections they got. We both know these big real estate and construction companies break the law all the time and get away with it. Honestly, it's worth a shot for me. We need the money to start our business. Besides, being a construction worker smells way better than sanitation. Guess I'll knock louder. You hear that? Who's that? Oh, right, the babysitter. Come in for a sec. What's your name? Dorothy, or just Dot. Huh, that's cute. Amos, this is Dot. Come in for a second. I swear I put my wallet down here somewhere. Sorry to intrude. Evelyn, Mrs. Hawkins, wanted me to come by and let you know she's ready to go. Can she wait a few more minutes? My boy Amos and I were just in the middle of a conversation. Okay, get this. You see how me and Hank, we got natural rapport? I'm the funny guy and he's the straight man? The Abbot to my Costello? Who's Abbot and Costello? Abbott and Costello, as in who's on first? You know what, never mind. What I'm saying is that when we're on third shift, the drive to work is funny as hell, because me and Hank just riff off each other, laughing our heads off about anything and everything. When we're on first shift, though, we're silent as a dormouse, listening to the morning news, but wishing we could hear folks like us just talking and having fun, even during the 6 a.m. shift. So get this, what if we recorded our banter and sold cassettes of it? People working night shifts could have their own morning show to listen to. And don't get me started on advertising opportunities. We could read ads for local businesses. I can't believe you invented the podcast. <laughs> Pod what? Nothing, man. Just know you're truly ahead of your time. I knew it was a great idea, and once we get hired working construction, we'll have the money to record in a studio, all professional. We can listen. We can list HUD as a sponsor. What's HUD? Department of Housing and Urban Development. They were the ones who decided to knock the building down to revitalize it. I know what they could also help revitalize my bank account. Well, good luck with all that. Mr. Hawkins, I think we should probably get back to your place. I guess you're right, Miss Dot. See you on the flip side, Amos. Smell you later, Hank. And I mean that literally, because we got their chip tomorrow. Is it really so important to you to stay here? Listen, I know it's not anyone's American dream house. We all do our best to organize, keep it clean, do all the work that management doesn't. It's still a project. It's just... I've been here a long time, and I know everybody. I feel if I leave, I'm saying all the time I spent here doesn't mean a thing. It's like, who said we can only find opportunity by leaving our people behind? Am I really just supposed to turn my back on Amos? Just like, got mine, see ya. I'm sure he'd understand. Yeah, maybe he'd understand, but I don't want to lose that connection. My dad always told me the hardest choices take sacrifice. Your dad is right. I just don't think it's worth sacrificing a community. I mean, let me ask you, what does a nice neighborhood even look like?
Somewhere where you and your kids can grow up without worry? For me, it's one where people take care of each other, and we're already doing that here. That got even more important to me after we had Georgia. I know why Ev wants to move where the schools are better, but I don't want my child to be lonely. Don't worry too much about Georgia. I have a feeling she won't be lonely for long. You know <laughs> you know something I don't miss, Dot? Not a thing, Mr. Hawkins. Speaking of home, I should get back. I still haven't found my wallet. I like the animation as she walks. Can't go in that door. All right. Have you seen my wallet? I have not seen his wallet. Aw oh, man, let me know if you find it. This is Georgia as a baby? Weird. Guess maybe I should go back to Amos's and look for it for him? Even though that makes no logical sense? Oh, wait, here it is. Literally just dropped it on the ground. <laughs> Thank you, where was it? It was in your pocket, you dropped it on the ground. Why am I not surprised? Listen, I know we dragged you into this whole mess, Ms. Babysitter, but I think we should stay in tonight, maybe. We clearly have a lot to talk about. So, no ten bucks? You still want it? How about this, then? Who's right? Should we take the voucher and move, or stay here with our friends and neighbors? I think you should move. Why not see what kind of stuff can you can make happen if you move? I like the way you think. I guess, maybe our golden ticket is still out there. Thank you so much for all your help. I hope you can actually babysit little Georgia sometime. She is a real handful, and stubborn, too. She's a baby. Oh, right. Anyway, I'll see you around. Just know you're both doing a great job with the whole parenting thing. Anyone ever call you precocious? Yeah, my mom does all the time. Alright, we made a choice. So, so far, my choices are rent instead of buy, and move out instead of... Move out instead of uh, stay. Boy, I need an apple. Second. Let me go over here. Um, I'm gonna run an ad break and get an apple. I shall be our B. Okay. So we made a decision in the early 50s. We made a decision in probably the early 90s. And so now I'm hoping that we're going to see the consequences of those decisions. I'm hoping this game is almost over because it was free. So I'm hoping it's going to be short. I'm not even going to bother sleeping this time. When did I dig out my lacrosse MVP trophy? Ugh, I still remember Phoebe, Rachel, and Monica making fun of my hair. Whenever I run into them at the coffee shop, they never say hi. Looks like the stain on my ceiling is gone. So maybe things are already changing. I'm not surprised. Door's locked. A storage closet? I can't even tell where I am this time. Uh, 
I wonder if I'm in my own time or still floating around in my family's history. The Interfaith Center looks different from normal. Between me and Rafi, we work so many hours, I'm afraid Zizi will forget the face of her parents. And all this work might be for nothing if we can't find a place to live. Has Rafi said anything about the house hunt? Any place in the area give you a reply? A few places, but they never give a clear answer. Always something about not being a right fit for the neighborhood or trying to preserve the character of the area. I'm losing hope. That's the same garbage they told my mother when we moved here years ago. The community center helped us then, and we'll do what we can to help you. No matter where we're from, we immigrants gotta stick together. Thank you, Alma, for your graces. I know we should stay humble, but it's hard on our pride sometimes. Rafi especially. He has dreamed of coming here and building a home with his own hands. But we've done nothing but rely on others since we arrived. A community is only as strong as the people in it. And if we don't keep good people like your family and ours, we aren't much of a community at all. That looks like my sister George's wife, Alma. Are you Dorothy? Alma's told me so much about you. I'm Esperanza. Nice to meet you. It's Dot, by the way. Are you new to the area? Our family plans to make a home here. At least we're hoping we can. It sounded like you need a place to stay. Right now, we're staying with my sister, Alejandra. When she brought our house, Alejandria was so excited that she convinced us to come here, too, for the opportunities. But there was so much fine print, the seller didn't tell her, and now she can't afford the payments. She has to move to a smaller place, so we have to find our own place soon. Geez, that's rough. Rafi has been looking for permanent work ever since we moved here, but they take one look at his name and never give him an interview. I've even had a harder time getting work since I took his last name. Well, I hope things go your way. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you, Dor I mean, Dot. I hope you see you around here soon. Dot, thought you were too busy with college applications to step foot here. Wait, Alma recognized me? And what's this college applications? Are you telling me I still pass as a teenager? Mission Control to Space Cadet Dot, you still there? So I'm thinking this is probably the uh, 2010s or maybe 2000s. Just thought I'd swing by. Having to boil my whole life, probably 2010s. Having to boil my whole life down to a personal statement is giving me a headache. Well, while you're here, why don't you help out? You're not too busy to help your dear sister-in-law this time, right? I guess since I'm already here. That's the spirit. Let's go. We'll trash the cash in now, since that's obviously <laughs> what we're supposed to do. Doing a potluck. Cool, how do we how do we do that? Oh, okay. Forty plus beers in business, we need your help. Theater's still open. <laughs> yes, it's the remake. <laughs> so yeah, this is 2010, so I'm pretty sure. Act one property change hands so many times in a decade and keep turning a profit. Truly a miraculous piece of land. Hey, Mr. Murphy, what brings you to the neighborhood? Oh, please, Alma, it's Michael. I was just admiring what I hope will be our future purchase. There's something deeply satisfying about an empty home, don't you think? Full of potential, ready to be made into a buyer's image, scrubbed of the past. By the way, have you talked to Georgia about finalizing the sale? She's thinking over. You don't make decisions like that lightly. Of course, of course. She's always been shrewd with finances, that one. I have faith that she'll make yet another smart decision to accept our generous offer. 
Just all remember the window of opportunity won't stay open forever. Advertising all over the place, but what exactly is it that you do? Hope private equity make dreams come true by financing them. We invest in prime properties in neglected neighborhoods like this one. You mean you trick people into buying homes they can't afford and then eventually kick them out and jack up the prices? I prefer to think of it as putting our resources to good use in underserved communities. Like my grandfather poor me, I'm helping revitalize the neighborhood by putting good people in good homes. You know, I was saying 2010s, but I'm actually betting this is like 2006, 2007, right before the housing crash in 2008. Doesn't seem to have worked out too well for them. Yeah, it's too bad. Everyone deserves a chance. Hope you do a better job. We're all entitled to our opinions. Anyway. This newspaper will tell us the date. Because it sounds like he's doing subprime lending. Oh, it's 2010. Okay. So it's just after... It's, it's the aftermath of the housing crash. Yeah, the idea is to generate cash flow until the market improves and then to sell the houses. He owns 38 houses now, and will close in on 15 more before the end of the month. I could buy a home for pennies, flip it into something livable, and then sell it for hundreds of thousands, says Joanna Wright, a 42-year-old mother from Ann Arbor who flips homes in Detroit with her husband. Yes, we were hit hard by the recession, just like everyone else. We almost lost everything. At least this way, with the money we're making flipping homes, I can make sure we're never in that position again. Hey, Dottie, it's been a ba minute, baby sis. How's life with Grandma as a roommate? Pretty chill and quiet. Grandma isn't really the chit-chatting type. Georgia, why are you out here? Are you on aren't you on unpanada duty? Cooling down, no worries. Got some exciting news. Talk to real estate people. We're finally gonna sell that house. So you're more excited about selling this empty house than you were when you bought yours. Always with a smart mouth, this one. I've been sitting on the house since the auction, and it's time to sell. Foreclosure auction, you mean? If we play it right, we could get twice or even triple the price I paid for it. So you've made up your mind to sell, Mr. Murphy? To, to Mr. Murphy? Michael's lined up an out-of-state buyer who's willing to pick this up right away. It finally feels like the hard work getting this pace fixed up has paid off. Our family's going to be one step closer to everything we dreamed about. What's with the silence? If we sell this house, no kid of ours will ever have to worry about going to college. I get it, Georgia. I really do, but... But I can't feel good about selling a piece of our block to some outside rich person who will do who knows what with it. Not when there are people in need right here. If we want to start our own family, we got to think about ourselves here, Alma. But we can help the people right in front of us, in our community. Alma did say that. You clearly have someone in mind. I've been talking to the uh, Tafik family at the community center. They're good people. They have a bright young daughter with a promising future. Everyone has turned them away. You want us to give up our dream to help some people we barely know? Georgia, that's not... They're immigrants, first generation, trying to make it, same as my family was. They have no roots here, and nobody wanted to take a chance on them. It's always like that. They're good people who deserve a chance like my family got. Let them rent the place, give them a home. Your family made it here because they worked hard. This family can do the same. It's not our job to make that happen for them. This home, the money I put into it, it's the fruit of generations of labor. My grandmother's, my mother's, and mine. If we blow this chance, we don't get a new one. Isn't it our responsibility to give back to the community that made us? My family didn't do this on our own. We came up with the support of everyone around us. We need to give that support to others now. I think that... Oh, you think? You think what, little sister? Do you have some secret ancestral knowledge on the situation or something? Please do share your wisdom. I didn't mean to. It's just that... No, no, no. If you're going to speak up, then speak up. You, should, you need to help the Tafik family. A home is made of more than one family or house. And we need to let people like them know they're welcome and looked after if we want to keep this neighborhood one worth living in. Glad to see the value of compassion is lost on you, Dot. Can't bring myself to do a full renegade run. 
always order me around. We're changing the past, making multiple timelines, or else we're overriding stuff like Back to the Future. Why is it after every time I come back, I'm not sure if I helped to make the right decision? Probably because it's... The key has stopped glowing, am I back home for good? I mean... It's, it's probably because these are like hard choices. Dorothy, what are you doing downstairs already? I thought you were sleeping. I wish. Well, there's still some mac and cheese if you want to reheat some. Og. That sound. Was that Carlos? Did he go back to the basement? Yes, that boy just won't stop going down there, even if it kills him. I should go check on him. I interacted with things 100 times. What is that awful smell? What are you doing down here? I thought I told you not to. Everything is ruined. I couldn't save any of my games. Cough, cough. Forget about the games. Come on, we need to get you upstairs and get your inhaler. I don't want to go upstairs. I don't even want to be here. How can you even stay in this house? Something's always falling apart every other week. Carlos, we can talk about this upstairs. Let's go. <coughs> cough, cough. Grandma should just buy a new house. Mom does it all the time. Why can't Grandma? She could buy a house where I could breathe. <coughs> cough, 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 cough. Carlos, I hear you. Really, you do. But we have to get out of here right now. Come upstairs and we'll talk about it. I wonder why, uh, I wonder why Alma and stuff, why they're not taking care of their kid. Or maybe she lives with them too? Alma and Georgia? What in God's grace has been happening? Carlos, are you okay? Yeah, Grandma, just out of breath. I think a pipe burst or something while Carlos was in the basement playing his game. He was knee-deep in sewer water down there. Boy, I told you not to play down there. It's bad enough that we already live so close to the industrial plant and their smog. You and I might not have been able you and I might have been able to get by, but all this is clearly affecting Carlos' asthma. With how old this house is, well, what are we gonna do? Just put a bandage on it at everything until something ha like this happens again? You know your grandpa Carl used to be the one to fix things up, Dorothy. It's just been so difficult since he's passed. <coughs> grandma, are you honestly okay with staying here? We know you deserve to live out your best life, and I don't want you to have to spend your years in a house that's falling apart. Do you know what we went through to get here? In fact I do. This house wasn't always our home. Y'all know the start, but not the house and wise. Before me and your Grandpa Carl left South Carolina, we only had enough to survive our present. But we wanted to build a foundation for our future, so we decided to move up here to Detroit. We walked into this house one day, ended up renting this place, giving ourselves time and money until we could make the place ours on our own terms. It was hard, seeing as that landlord was the definition of no good. Never did a thing for us or the place. But we saved ourselves a good penny and bought little things here and there to make this place feel like home. And when the money finally came in after Carl got that job at the plant, it was ours. So they really listened to my advice. Years passed and we had Hank and then Hank met Evelyn. Your mom always pushed Hank to be better and do better, which is why they left here to live in their own apartment. Even though he had never admitted, your dad's ideas kept getting bigger and bigger so he could make Evelyn's dreams come true. And what were mom's dreams? To have a home of her own, a place where she and her family could feel safe. I know Evelyn doesn't talk about it much, but that girl spent a lot of her early years in the struggle. That's exactly why she was so adamant to you and Georgia never experienced the same. Evelyn convinced your dad the burbs were the place to find the opportunity and success. Can't deny that helped y'all come up from razor sharp, but I missed you so much. It wasn't always easy making the trip up there to see you and your sister, but your parents never seemed happier, and that's why I had the fencing trophy or whatever. They made enough in their savings to buy that timeshare down in Florida before you even finished high school. So this wasn't all a dream. I really went back to the past. No matter how it turned out, your parents gave y'all everything. You and Georgia had your own home, and your sister even ended up selling houses herself. Georgia always knows a good deal when she sees one. She's just like your mama. If a good opportunity is in front of her, she won't hesitate to take advantage of it. Guess you're right. Georgia's always been something else. She's old enough to remember when your parents lived in public housing, but she was never near righteous make sh about... She was near righteous to make sure she and Alma were better off. Remember when she wanted to sell the house next door? She only gave up on selling after Alma talked some sense into her. Decided it was time someone else got the opportunity she got. But the pie was big enough for her family to have plenty and share too. Glad she did, because the Tafiks are good people and good neighbors, always helping out with a smile too. That's easy, sure grew up to be beautiful. I bet she's off the camp for summer last time I talked to her mom. I wonder, is it space camp? 
It's a messy story, I know. It wasn't always clear to us what was right, but it all got us here. We struggled for our place, put down roots for y'all to grow from. Grandma, I appreciate the history, but why why does it matter how long we've been here if we can't stay here because it's falling apart? Dot, you've been quiet. Don't you have something to say about all this? After all, it's your house we're talking about. My house? What do you mean, my house? Child, who did you think was going to get this house after I'm gone? I figured Dad would get it, or even Georgia, since she's the oldest and a real estate whiz. You know your dad couldn't stand these Michigan winters again. George has asked about it once before. Lord knows she's been dreaming for years about what she could do with the property. But I want to give this house to someone who calls it a home. Grandma, I don't know what to say. I never imagined. Well, start imagining. After hearing all this from you, I've thought about it, and I can see how hard everyone worked to get us here. At the same time, doesn't it always seem like we're constantly on the edge of achieving our dreams? Everything we want is always right out of reach. And with prices going up and people being pushed out, it's only going to get harder to keep up. That's why we should sell this place. We have always made our home where we can find it. This neighborhood is changing, and we need to change with it. If that's your decision, then I respect it. It's about time I handed the keys to the next generation. Do you remember the door in the basement? I keep what's important in there. Inside is a room. Inside the room is a lockbox containing the deed to the house. It's yours now. I told you this place was always going to be yours. You'll need this. Soul decided to sell the house. Can't believe I've never gone in here before. It's the same key, but not glowing anymore. Wow, the deed to the house. I wonder what the future has in store. Got the neutral ending! Today's the big potluck over at the Interfaith Community Center, and of course, Alma's leading the charge. I know I'm not in the neighborhood as much in these days, but geez, I'm always put to work as soon as I'm back. It's just we really wanted a place that was ours, you know? Grandma may have given me the keys, but I always see that house as hers. So I moved out to the suburbs and got a place of my own. It's close to work, and we're trying to start a family, too. I guess in some strange way, I'm continuing my family legacy of making homes of our own. Though sometimes, I worry if I made the right choice. I hate that Grandma lives up in that house alone. These days, I am teaching at the charter school, preparing for the next generation for greatness. It's a nice job. A charter school with plenty of resources. The kids are well-behaved. Too behaved, honestly. Guess I'm used to classrooms where kids are allowed to be kids. Speaking of kids, I haven't seen that nephew of mine in a long time. Carlos Baylor comes to visit Grandma. That new nonprofit architecture job has him working day and night. Not that he minds. He's constantly saying what they are doing is big, making housing affordable for tons of people. Wish he had put that much enthusiasm into this neighborhood, though. Still, I miss him. Hey, we got an ending. So I'm assuming because I said, oh yeah, have a Rafik um, move in, that was a positive choice. And because I sold the house, that was a neutral ending. But I'm betting that the good ending has to do with keeping the house and like fixing it up. And the bad ending is probably what happens if you make all of the non-community-based choices and sell the house. Because I really didn't make that many choices. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's a free game. What do you want? Uh, the animation was cute. Game wasn't really buggy or anything. Um, obviously, it had a message about... We need to keep communities together. Um, at least, I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming. It seemed that that was what was going to be the positive ending. I suppose, since I got the neutral ending, I can't know for sure. And maybe the positive ending was you sell everything and leave everything behind. But the way that was written, it seemed like it was wanting you to make community-based choices. Um... But yeah, endings. Okay, so yeah, for, for the bad ending, I probably needed to put out the cash for keys flyers and um, say sell the house. Like that might have made all the difference. And then the good ending is we keep the house and then have a land trust and kick out the guy. I wonder if it'll let me view the other endings. 
Oh, nice! It's not making me replay through the whole game. Routine isn't always bad. Sometimes after a hectic day, you look forward to it. Every night I come home, George the doorman lets me in. We exchange a hello, just a nod. I don't know anything about him except his name, and he only knows me as Miss Dorothy from the 17th floor. After Grandma sold the house, she moved in with Alma and Georgia. Grandma gave me the money, told me to find some place comfortable. She said she wouldn't even know what to spend it on. She had already gotten everything she wanted in life. Even when her health got worse, she refused to let a cent of that money be spent on her. Georgia moved her into a nursing home eventually. It made more sense than hiring a full-time nurse, I guess. But still, I hate thinking about her alone in that place. I keep myself busy with work. I'm teaching at the charter school, preparing the next generation for greatness. It's a nice job, charter school with plenty of resources. Kids are well-behaved. Too behaved, honestly. Guess I'm used to classrooms where kids are allowed to be kids. Carlos has taken up George's business in the old neighborhood, practically runs the place, I'm told. Every other week is another open house. He's even beating Georgia in sales. I don't know where he's finding these buyers, but he makes it happen. Or at least that's what Grandma told me. With Grandma's house sold, we don't see each other much. We try to make plans, but there's always this and that getting in the way. Well, this is me. It's so easy to get lost in on thought on the way up. There's a notice on the door. Dear resident, we've been alerted by other residents of excessive noise coming from your unit during quiet hours, 9 p.m. 6 a.m. last night. Please be mindful of your fellow residents. Should we continue to receive complaints, we will have no choice but to enforce penalties and or involve law enforcement. Sincerely, Woodward Towers Management. Now my music is noise, huh? I wish my fellow residents would have the guts to come and talk to me about it in person. But then again, we all keep to ourselves around here in the towers. From the view up here, it seems like the old neighborhood keeps changing. They bulldozed the old community center a couple years ago. They treated it as a celebration, part of this redevelopment project. They were going to hire locals to help build it, but instead the project stayed in limbo for years. They could never agree what it was going to be, could never finalize the details. Now it's a fenced off pile of rubble that people pass by every day. Workers only show up to fence off the place again after some bad weather knocks down the perimeter. They managed to pack the city council with politicians who are in real estate developers' pockets. I've even heard they're considering buying people out or giving people vouchers to move while they rebuild the neighborhood. For new people with new money, there are still people out there who have hope for the neighborhood. They're out there doing their part, organizing. But I guess it's not really my neighborhood anymore. Me, I'm just trying to make it out of here. Make it out here on my own. Yeah, so just being totally isolated and letting the uh letting the people take over the neighborhood. Take care of your home and it'll take care of you. Grandma told me that after she gave me the keys. I didn't know what she meant at the time, but now I realize that I was thinking too small. A home is more than a piece of property, a single building. It's a place, a community. Carlos soon moved in with Grandma after I moved out. He still complains about the house sometimes, but I know he loves it there. Grandma has always been good company, and so long as she is not lonely, all of us are happy. As for me, I'm teaching at a local school, trying to pass on some knowledge to the next generation. When I started, kids kept asking me for advice on this and that after class. And I realized being a teacher means more than just sticking to the lesson plan. A few years ago, the neighborhood put up a vote to create a community land trust. We organized and made sure nobody could move in, our, in on our homes or renew the neighborhood to the point where we couldn't afford to live in it anymore. Companies keep moving in, making offers and trying to buy us out, but we've held strong. Sometimes we'll get a new politician with ties to big real estate developers who tries to get us to sell out our neighborhood. But we're a community, and that means not only making this a good place to live for the people here now, but for the people who come next. And speaking of the next generation, we can't leave this neighborhood to others anymore. We need to show up, not just in polls, but in town halls, school boards, even their front yards if we have to. Let the powers that be know that this is our neighborhood, and we're going to fight for it. Weird, the good ending seemed like it was shorter. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the game. So, um, you know, it's free. And uh, if you want to play through it yourself, there might be different uh, dialogue slightly if you make different choices. But uh, yeah, that's basically the game. So, um, You know, it's free out of ten. Uh, I, I felt like it was fine. Um, it definitely had a message that it was pushing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't have much to say about it. Um, I, part of me is like, I wish that it was a little bit longer so that I could get more attached to the characters, 
but the other part of me is like it already felt like it was too long. Um. So. Yeah, I think uh, you know it was a game that wanted to put across a specific message rather than necessarily telling a good story or having interesting gameplay. Um, but yeah, it was free, so can't really be mad. And it didn't take up too much of my time. It took a little over an hour. Um, so anyway, I think what I'm going to do now is I am going to run an ad break and then we are going to play the next unplayed game in the series, um, which is Dr. Livingstone, I presume. So I shall be back in about five minutes.